rise of urban networks and the movement of humanity into a predominantly engineered environment corresponds to a broader process of change brought about in the Anthropocene, the so-called Age of Humans. After 1950, we can see for the first time that major Earth system changes became directly linked to changes largely related to the global economic system, with this coinciding with the huge rise of major urban centers. Urban centers occupy only 3% of global land areas, but their physical impact is directly connected to very complex environmental transformations that take place far beyond the confines of the city. Large-scale planetary metabolic flows are mobilized in order to supply the largest urban centers. Whole regions, territories, and landscapes are operationalized in new ways in order to provide food, energy, water, materials, and other basic resources that result in massive transformations in ecosystems far away and often unseen by the population. Landscapes in Malaysia are transformed into palm plantations for biofuels that keep urban transport systems running. Cement and iron are pulled out of the ground in Russia to lay concrete for the 20 million Chinese moving into cities every year. Water systems in the Himalayas are altered to provide for the urban centers of northern India. Rare earth metals extracted from Africa for the millions of smartphones that keep Paris connected. The largest of these land and resource consumers are what we call megacities, which are urban centers of more than 10 million people. In 1950, New York was the first megacity on the planet. By 1985, there were nine of such kind. Today, there are 31 megacities, and this is projected to rise to 41 within just over a decade. The largest of these megacities is Tokyo. With over 30 million people, it is the 10th largest economy in the world larger than Russia, Spain, or Turkey. Jakarta is likewise one of the largest megacities, its mass of concrete sprawling out to support a population greater than that of Australia. Environmentally, many of the factors relating to the sustainability of an urban center are closely connected to the density of the urban environment. The current model of urbanization in many parts of the world engenders low-density suburbanization with a dependence on car ownership. It is energy-intensive and contributes substantively to climate change. For example, urban development in Mexico City has resulted in a sprawling urban environment with air pollution and major traffic congestion, a city with an average daily commute time of two and a half hours. The physical space that these cities consume is projected to increase two to three times in the coming decades, and the material consumption of cities is likewise set to double over this time. Sprawling cities where residents are dependent on cars to obtain basic provisions in far-off places of the city are a critical vulnerability many populations around the world face today. As the impacts of climate change are set to only increase in the coming decades, large monolithic centralized urban systems are presenting increasing vulnerabilities. The rise of urban networks corresponds to a transformation in the traditional divide between countryside and city, which is giving way to a much more subtle combination. Cities are becoming distributed out into larger urban networks, merging natural and engineered environments within a new geography of the city region that may span hundreds of kilometers and cross national borders. Interlinked ground transportation corridors 
such as high-speed rail and expressways, have aided in the integration of urban centers into large distributed networks, like the Randstad area in Northern Europe connecting Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and The Hague, or the Pearl Delta region in Southern China connecting Hong Kong, Shenzhen, and Guangzhou, which is emerging as the largest urban area in the world in both size and population. In the age of the Anthropocene, when human impacts on the biosphere are all-pervasive, the challenge of sustainability is no longer one of confining urban centers, but is now one of developing engineered environments that manage to merge the natural and artificial in new ways to create synergies. In the challenge of city density is also the opportunity for creating multifunctional, compact, integrated, and ecologically connected urban environments. Ecologically efficient urban systems are strategically densified and distributed to create a network of high-density nodes interconnected with efficient and affordable mass transit. In these compact, well-designed urban environments, people consume less energy, less land, and are more connected. With the rise of urban systems, we are increasingly recognizing that the battle for a sustainable future will be won or it will be lost in cities. And there is a race to build a functional, sustainable model of a city and to replicate that model around the world.